come on, guys, get out of here. I'm not ready for the tutorial yet. What do you think? This beauty just happens overnight? I gotta do something to fix this skin. Come on, get out of here. Jesus. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new, I'm Daniel. Hit that subscribe button so we can, you know, joke around more, do some awesome tutorials, and just be friends. That's all I want. Anyway, today we're talking about some skin retouching techniques. Now, I know this would normally be like a workflow Wednesday kind of deal, but it's a little bit more advanced and something that a lot of people who watch this as portrait photographers might want to know how to do, so I thought, Let's spend a little bit more time on it. Now the goal with this is to show you how to properly touch up a face from a portrait you've taken. You know, you've seen those portraits online where like the woman's skin looks immaculate and that's just unrealistic. Nobody's skin is perfect and that's what I'm trying to get at here. There's a way to touch it up without making it too over the top and like, you know those like face tuned photos where the girl looks like she's literally made out of plastic? That's what we want to avoid. There's three tools on how to do it, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it properly today. So for today's video, I'm not gonna throw any models under the bus. I'm gonna use myself because my skin is definitely far from perfect. I've got pimples, crinkles, lines, marks, even gashes. How did I get that gash on my nose, you might ask? Well, it's time for Storytime with Daniel. Welcome to another episode of Storytime with Daniel. I was helping my friend build a gazebo and a metal bar fell on my face. And that was story time with Daniel. Let's touch up your portraits, fix up those faces, and do it in a way so that your photos don't look unrealistic. Let's get into Photoshop. By the way, I've been working on my teleportation, so let's teleport over to the computer. Ready? Ooh. Come on! Forget it, I'm done. Now, before we get into the tools, let's just take a look at the before picture so you guys can actually appreciate that I am human and despite what you might believe, I do have flaws, you know? Look at this skin. I've got pimples, I've got, you know, scars from chicken pox when I was a kid. I've got that scar on my nose which you know, it doesn't seem that prominent in the picture now that I look at it, but I forgot to shave in some spots. Apparently, at almost 30, you're still learning how to shave. Come on, Daniel. Point of this, it's not perfect, but how the heck am I gonna land a supermodel career if I'm sending in these headshots and my skin isn't flawless? We're gonna fix that, but we're not gonna overdo it. The first tool is the patch tool. Now the patch tool is fantastic for getting rid of bigger blemishes, but you have to be careful where you sample from. So I'll show you how it works. All you have to do is press J on your keyboard and the patch tool will be selected. And what you're gonna do is draw around whatever you wanna remove. So in this case, I'm drawing around that pimple. And all you're gonna do is once you have that dotted line around it, you're just gonna drag off to a separate area of skin that is clear. And it's that simple that blemish is gone. Now you can also do this with patches of like shadowy areas. Apparently I got hit in the head as a kid. I got a dent here. Um, I'm just gonna move that over, clears it up. What I'm gonna tell you guys is when you're using the patch tool, you have to be careful where you're sampling to. So once you circle your blemish and you drag to another area, you gotta be careful where you're dragging to. I'll show you what I mean. So I've got this pimple right here on my cheek. I'm gonna circle it and let's say I want to get rid of it, but I drag it over my eyebrow. It's going to sample the texture from where you drag to and try to best match it to the color area surrounding what you selected from, if that makes sense. So as you can see on the photo here, I have these random sprouts of hair that look really weird. So we're going to undo that. We're going to select our pimple again and drag it to an area close to where the pimple was. Pimple's gone. Now you're just going to repeat that for any blemishes you have. The more you do this, the quicker you get. So now 
I've basically gotten to a point where I can just circle and drag without even thinking, just subconsciously just zipping through it. You know, I'm gonna get rid of some of this extra beard hair, just clean up my beard so it looks good. Another tip for this is you don't wanna take too big of an area because let's say you take, you know, this full cheek area and you wanna clean that up, wherever you drag it to, the chances of you getting a nice even clean patch are gonna be very rare and as you can see here it kind of squishes my face and the texture looks really weird so you want to work in smaller areas and also when dealing with the patch tool sometimes you'll get jagged edges undo it try dragging to another um, sample area so that you can clean that up now I'm just gonna get rid of this scar on my nose easiest way to do that is to just select the scar and then just go down the bridge of the nose just a little bit boom Scar is gone. It's like nobody even hit me in the head with a metal beam. Uh, I've got like a little chicken pox scar on my temple, gone. Little chicken pox scar on my forehead. Little bumps and bruises, get rid of those. Just clean it up. Oop. There we go. The big stuff is gone for the most part, and now we can move on to the next tool. But before we move on to the next tool, I'm gonna do something that I may have spoken about in a previous tutorial. Super important, very critical for managing your work and making sure that you don't screw up the project you're working on. I'm gonna duplicate the layer. Command or Control J creates a new layer on top of the layer you're already doing. Every time you go through a step, just Control J or Command J, create a new layer. This way you're working off something fresh. If you make a mistake on that layer, you can just delete it and go back instead of having to go all the way back to the beginning. It's pretty straightforward. It's gonna save you a lot of work in the long run. Let's move on to the next tool, the brush tool. Now I know what you're thinking, the brush tool, what are you just gonna paint over it? Eh, no, you're not gonna do that. Well, yeah, I guess you kind of are, but you're gonna do it to a very, very subtle degree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press B on our keyboard, select our brush tool, size it accordingly to whatever area you wanna work on, and here's the trick. You're gonna set the opacity to 10%. So up at the top, you can drag the slider down to 10%. You know, 10 to 15% I find is fine. Or a little quick keyboard shortcut, when you have the brush tool selected, one through zero are the percentages of opacity. So if you press one, it's 10%. If you press two, 20%, etc. So we're gonna set it to 10%. Hold down Alt on the keyboard and select a tone in the area that you wanna work on. So we're gonna work on my forehead. I'm gonna select kind of a mid-tone and just slowly brush across. Now you might be able to see this on your screen, but it's very subtly flattening out the, the colors. It's kind of reducing the amount of pores you can see in my skin without completely eliminating all of them. The minute you eliminate all pores, it becomes a waste. You're, you look like a plastic Barbie doll and you're dealing with that Facetune picture that I showed you earlier. So if you guys check this out, you know, you wanna select multiple colors. You don't wanna just select one color. If you wanna go for the highlights, select the highlights. In some of the shadow areas, hit the shadows. Be very conscious of the light. You know, where's the light coming from? Are you painting on neutral tones over highlights? That's just gonna flatten your face out. It's gonna look unrealistic. So select from everywhere. I wanna touch up the, the bridge of my nose. I'm gonna select the whitest part of my nose. You know, select the darker sides. In my eyes, it's a little bit darker. Now, this is a great way to get rid of bags under the eyes. So let's check this out. I'm gonna grab from the cheek where it's a little bit lighter than the bag under my eye. Apparently, I need more sleep. And I'm just gonna paint that in. Okay, now very, very softly, not too, too much. You can still see there's a bit of a bag. That's natural, you want that. You don't wanna you know, erase it completely flat and it looks like unbelievable. So check this out, I'm gonna hide that layer now and you can see the forehead's a little bit softer, the bags under the eyes are a little bit you know, less prominent, but still it looks believable. If you showed someone this final product, they're not gonna be like, whoa, whoa, you retouched the hell out of that. They'd be like, whoa. That guy's a supermodel. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Select the mid-tones of the cheek, paint in on the, the bags under the eyes, maybe select here, you know. We're just gonna try and get rid of those super dark spots without making it too, too light, too, too obvious. You can even brighten up areas of the face like that. Let's hide that layer again and see. Yeah, look at that. So it's, it's a world of difference. Same thing applies to like the cheek areas. So if you look at my cheeks, let's zoom right in here. By the way, the 85 millimeter lens is 
super sharp, crazy accurate. Look at the pores on my cheeks here. So apparently I need a facial. That's what I'm learning at this point. We're just gonna grab a mid-tone here and then just paint over the cheeks a little. It's gonna hide those pores a little bit, but not too much that it's unrealistic. So the, the color is staying the same. The only difference is the amount of, you know, like the pores are very dark in terms of the shadow. So we're just sort of leveling that off. And you're just gonna keep repeating this process all around the face, just smooth it out a tiny bit. Honestly, I find that wherever you're painting, you probably need one or two strokes at most, like sometimes three, but never, never more than that. You don't wanna overdo it because then you get that plastic looking face and that is not believable. So now that we've finished using the brush tool, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at the before and after. So this is the after when we brushed it and we're gonna hide that layer. There's the before. It's a little bit more contrasty, yes, but we're gonna fix that in a minute. But you, you can see that the lines on my face and the pores and the blemishes are all well hidden without being too hidden, if that makes sense. Again, you want to avoid that plastic look Less is more in this scenario. So let's say we're happy with this. I'm satisfied. I know my skin's not perfect, but it looks pretty damn close. We're gonna move on to the next step, the next tool, dodge and burn. First things first, like we did before the previous step, duplicate that layer. Control J or Command J if you're working on a Mac. Start fresh in case you screw up, you can just erase it. And another thing I actually really like to do with this sort of step is sometimes when I'm using the dodge and burn tool, even I find that I've dodged and burned it way too much. Instead of completely erasing that layer, you can just lower the opacity. So if like a, you know, 50% opacity looks good, no need in starting over, it works perfectly. So dodge and burn tool, you're gonna hit O, for this tool, what we're doing is readjusting those lights and shadows. So remember when we painted that in, we kind of flattened out the image a little bit. It's fine, we're gonna fix it. But again, the name of the game is to not overdo it. What we're doing here is we're setting the opacity again to probably about 10 to 15%. And we're gonna just repaint in those shadows and highlights that we kind of torched out when we were using the brush tool. And again, I can't stress this enough, the name of the game is to do it lightly, less is more. We're just gonna go in and we're gonna paint in some of the highlights. Now what I like to do is you can switch back and forth between the dodge and burn tool, but if you have one tool selected, all you have to do is press alt and it will do the adverse effect. So right now I'm, I'm lightening up the highlights. If I hold down alt, that same brush with the same opacity, same pressure is gonna produce shadows. So I'm gonna go in, you know, Fix the shadows on my cheek a little bit here. I did lower it a bit. I'm gonna go back into my eyebrows and eyelashes and fix that. Bring up this highlight a little bit on my nose so it's not too flat. Highlight the cheeks a little bit more so it just gives them a little bit more shape. Get under here, get the mouth going a little bit. Um, there's a little bit of a shadow on my nose. We'll just touch that up, boom. Another little secret I like to do with the eyes in my photo 90% of the time when you're looking at a portrait, the eyes are the focal point. So what I'll do is just a little bit, not too much because you don't want glowing crazy eyes. I'll just go in and dodge and burn the eyes a little bit, a little bit, you know, lighten them up towards the middle, just a tiny bit, and then hold down Alt and darken them up around the edges. I also like to whiten up the whites of the eyes. It just, you know, makes it look a little bit, it pops a little bit more. And without messing with it too much, we've definitely made some serious progress on this. So let's see the difference between our brush layer and our dodge and burn layer right here. So you can see we've just added a little bit more shape back to the face. Haven't changed anything. If you were to show someone this portrait and they were looking at me, they wouldn't think that too much was done to it. That's, that's clutch because you don't want them seeing like, why do you look like a Ken doll? in your picture, and in real life, you're full of pimples. So, just touched up a little bit, brought out the cheek, the shape of the cheeks, which we flattened out earlier by using the brush tool. And let's take a look at the difference between our final product and our original. So we're gonna hide all the other layers. So there you go, it's a lot darker, a lot more pimples, whereas our final product is smoother, but still not too smooth that it's unrealistic. Now, to wrap it up, guys, again, the name of the game is being subtle. Don't go too crazy with it. 
it's very, very easy to ruin your photos doing this, but if you can be subtle, it's gonna take your portraits to the next level. And if you haven't seen my tutorial on how to sharpen your images in post, this is a great time to do that as well, using the high pass filter. I'll link that up here. You guys, go watch that video. If you can use these two in tandem, I guarantee you, your portrait photography is gonna be next level. You won't, people won't even be able to compete. Be like, where did you learn this? How did you become a pro overnight? Well, you've got the secrets. If you liked the video, if you thought it was helpful, hit that subscribe button, like the video, comment down below. Even comment down below if you think I did something wrong or you do something differently. I'd love to hear it. Make sure you're subscribed and I will catch you guys in the next video. Love ya. By the way, I gotta give credit where credit is due. My dad took this picture of me on a whim. The guy just absolutely nailed it. I went downstairs, I was like, Dad, I need you to take a photo of me it's for a video. And I told him, just make sure my face fills up the screen. Guy threw his glasses on, fired off one shot, killed it. I mean, I know where he gets it from, but props, Dad, you killed it on this one.